Welcome to the Farrell Center on the banks of the Brazos River, home of the 2021 national champion Baylor Bears men's basketball team who have opened practice this week ahead of the 2022-23 season, a season which they come into with a lot of new faces, one of which highly touted prospect Keontae George, who's impressing his teammates and his coaches and a Jalen Bridges who Baylor fans saw play against them for the past few years at West Virginia, now suiting up in the green and gold instead of the blue and gold. Here is what the Bears had to say on the team's media day at the Farrell Center. Where do you want to start? Yeah, Scott, uh, what's kind of some of the goals of the early practices? You got yeah. five newcomers and yeah. a bunch of veterans. So the great thing is playing in Canada really uh, helped us uh, jumpstart our offense, defense. Um, um, but now you're down to these 30 practices. You want to get in as much as you can. Uh, say your prayers, no one gets injured so that uh, you can build that chemistry that's so uh, needed come uh, uh, season time. And then be able to find out what rotations, what lineups, who works and plays best with who. Let's say, how are you health wise right now? Great news. Nobody's injured. Everybody's doing well. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, I think we got all those injuries out last year. We should be good to go all this year. Scott, you talked about that Canada slate. Just how beneficial was that? What did you see from your team? Well, I think it was really good uh, uh, for the players that were first time in our program from the standpoint uh, you had 10 practices and then you had great competition. Um, so that allowed them to get game experience, uh, running our offense and defense. And then from there, we've been able to um, add uh, and, and obviously having coached and uh, practice with guys, known some of their limitations. So uh, structure some of the offense moving forward around uh, what guys uh, uh, are best at. In Canada, with, with your own team, did Canada help you uh, and your on-court staff kind of get more in the flow? Yeah, de yeah definitely. That, uh, that was different for our staff, too, because uh, uh, um, since I've been here, used to having Coach Tag there. And a uh, uh, great opportunity for uh, new guys to uh, step into new roles. And then at the same time, for uh, uh, Tweedy uh, to get adjusted um, to being on staff, uh, Luke Simons. Uh, now is on staff, so uh, we're excited about the additions we have with our team and our staff. Scott, as far as uh, every day, John, when do you expect home to be fully cleared? And what's your hope as far as getting home? Yeah, every day, John, is rehabbing every day, so uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there is no timetable for his return. Uh, obviously, it was a significant injury, uh, um, and we don't uh, expect him any time uh, soon, but at the same time, uh, each and every day, uh, uh, if anyone uh, can work harder to get back than him, uh, please introduce him or, or show him to me because we'll recruit him because John and everything he does gives 100%. He's been unbelievable in rehab. And uh, because of that, he's given himself a, uh, a, a chance to return uh, sooner rather than later because uh, most people would have thought after the injury he sustained, uh, it's a multiple year thing and we'll see what happens. What about this year's group stands out to you most? Uh, I think uh, first and foremost, we got a, a lot of hard workers. We got guys that love to be in the gym. Um, really, uh, uh, kind of boring from the standpoint. They spend so much time in the gym. Uh, really, that's their uh, uh, that and maybe video games is what occupies most of their day. Now that uh, we're with school, obviously that takes up a big portion of things. But really, extracurricular and stuff like that. Uh, uh, a good night for these guys is usually in the gym, and that's a blessing for us. How big will Adam and Flo be just from a leadership standpoint? Well, uh, you, you got uh, uh, John, Adam, and Flo, all guys that are, are, are fifth-year guys. That means uh, they know what college is like. They know what to expect. And uh, uh, I think, uh, um, first of all, with, as a coach, we're really blessed to have uh, uh, three guys that uh, are, are team-first guys. And whenever you have leaders that are experienced but are great uh, team guys and great teammates, they're great examples for the uh, first, second, and third year guys. And especially with the transfer portal nowadays and uh, with how many people leave to uh, uh, go pro, uh, whenever you can get guys that have been in college for five years uh, that are as selfless as these guys, uh, you're really blessed as a coaching staff. That's so on the flip side of that, Keontae looked really good in, in Canada. What have you seen out of him uh, throughout since then that maybe he's impressed you? A lot of buckets. Uh, uh, people in, in uh, Canada saw just uh, uh, offensively what he's capable of. Uh, but what, what our staff has really uh, enjoyed about Keontae is he's an extremely hard worker, um, wants to get better on the defensive end, 
um, just because any freshman that comes in, there's a different uh, speed and physicality uh, required on the defensive end, on and off the ball. And he's been eager to learn. Um, he, he's really fit in well with the, uh, uh, the upperclassmen. And something that uh, uh, you love as a coach is uh, each and every day, uh, he wants to get better, will spend the time necessary to get better. And he can really facilitate, really pass the ball. So it's not uh, somebody you can just load up on uh, and he's going to take a bunch of bad shots. He's going to hit the open guys. And that's one thing this team really does well is move the ball offensively. They really share it. They're really unselfish. They're fun to watch. Scott, what are your expectations for Langston Love? Yeah, Langston uh, just got cleared uh, uh, a week ago where he's able to uh, go through contact. So uh, he's somebody that uh, has been out for a while. So it's going to take some time to get the rust off. But he works extremely hard, just like the rest of the guys. And uh, uh, he's somebody that uh, during that year off really got uh, stronger physically and then really improved his skill level. He was always known as a great uh, scorer. I think his shooting's more consistent um, because that's basically uh, one of the main things he could do during this time off. So uh, we're excited uh, for people to show how he's improved his consistency as a shooter too. Scott, as far as LJ, how's he doing? Uh, LJ is somebody that uh, uh, before he got injured uh, was shooting and scoring at a high rate. Um, he's someone also just got cleared uh, a couple weeks ago for contact and he's picked up uh, right where he left off because uh, in practice uh, I don't think he's missed many shots and uh, what he's uh, done that uh, uh, excites uh, our staff though is uh, uh, his ability to share the ball this year and get in the paint and create for others. Uh, last year really uh, um, he was looked upon to score this year. He's taken uh, and embracing both roles defensively like everybody on the team. He continues to uh, get better at what we want to do and uh, excited to have him back on the court. Coach, any prediction for the Baylor football game on Saturday? Oh, we're winning. Uh, don't know a final score yet, but uh, uh, definitely have confidence. And it's going to be a great uh, uh, turnout. I know uh, we've had great crowds thus far at home. And what are we on a 9-10 game home win streak? I want to thank the Baylor fans and Baylor family for making all that possible. Going to be a little bit cooler, so get there early, stay late. Let's get that dub. Hey, Coach, in terms of this time of year, you know, late September, early October, what are those big things that you hope that by mid-October, mid-late October, you guys will accomplish? Well, first as a coach, uh, um, you got to get that chemistry and, and find out who plays well with who and so you can figure out rotations. Uh, and then uh, you want to get them in, in shape enough that uh, uh, when the first couple games come, they're able to uh, not have fatigue be a factor. Uh, and then uh, with that, every team is different as far as uh, strengths and weaknesses. And as a coach, adjusting what we do offensively or def defensively uh, to put them in the best positions to be successful. That's what makes uh, coaching so fun. And then uh, you do that all prayerfully. No one gets injured so that uh, uh, you can make sure that everyone has good chemistry and rhythm going into season. Scott, your two uh, D1 transfers, how, how do you feel like they're going to yeah, what, what are going to be there? Well, well, the good thing about a Division One transfer, especially coming from BYU and West Virginia, where they've been well coached and uh, uh, physically, uh, they've already adapted and they're used to college uh, uh, basketball. They're used to uh, just the schedule and what goes into a college athlete. Um, but with us having them in Canada was huge because, again, that allowed them to put the uh, Baylor uniform on and be able to run our offense and defense and start to get acclimated to things. So I think that will really pay dividends uh, come the beginning of the season. What was it about Jalen Bridges that the second he went into the portal, you said, I want him off my bench? Well, at first, uh, uh, he can really score it. And coaches uh, uh, like guys that uh, uh, make offenses look good. And uh, his freshman year, he led the Big 12 in three-point percentage. Uh, sophomore year uh, um, was one of the best in the conference, actually both years, uh, efficiency-wise, but uh, uh, great free throw shooter. Um, and then offensively, he really rebounds. And uh, we've had great rebounders on, on the offensive glass, and uh, he carries that over. Uh, you know he's been coached. You know he has the toughness coming from West Virginia. He knows about the Big 12. Um, but somebody that can space the floor with the guards uh, that we have is something that's exciting. Let's you go. guys on point today. I appreciate love it. it. Appreciate it. Hey, if you want, I know our guys are some over. All right. It was real subtle too, you know. Well, Adam, uh, 
obviously, um, you know, a lot of these guys have been here a while, the transfers and stuff. How, how's that going as far as chemistry? Uh, it's been great. The time that we spent off the court has been so special. Uh, it's helped us, you know, get along and uh, learn each other's games at the end of the day. If we're, you know, friends off the court, it makes it real easy come, you know, game time when I have to uh, ask for help or Flo comes and set a screen, you know, he's understanding that, you know, we can help the team and do certain things as long as we're together. So really it's been so important for us and the coaching staff as well to put the time in outside of the court. So. How about you as just as far as your leadership? Do, do you feel like uh, you have to step up in that way, you know, being one of the older guys? Uh, definitely, definitely. Being that I, I've been here for some time now, me, Flo, John, uh, you know, LJ guys that have been around and I've been a part of the championship team as well. I definitely, I definitely feel like it's my role to step into that leadership, especially in the guard position with you know new guys like Keontae, very skillful guys. You know, you know Dale coming back, Tuan coming in, uh, just being able to lead them and kind of show them the ropes a little bit and show what Baylor basketball is. Adam, from the season last year where you guys it seemed like every other week there was a different guard who was out with injury. How much do you learn about y'all as a group when you have that? You definitely learn a lot being able to. Or have guys that are extremely talented, and when things go go like that, being able to put you know guys in like Dale or you know James being able to take over a game, having me and LJ out, or me stepping into the point guard position when he was out, it just shows how versatile and complete as a guard group we were. But it also uh, just shows the trust you know from the coaching staff in the sense of putting guys in new you know situations and knowing that we'll get the job done at the end of the day. What impresses you about Keontae? Uh, just um, his willingness to learn at the end of the day, you know, coming in so highly recruited and, you know, having all this uh, attention towards him, you know, him being so coachable and listening not only to the coaches, but to, you know, the guys that have been here, me and LJ, even Langston, you know, we, you know, pouring to him, him taking it and, and running with it is so special. What is it about playing against Jalen that when he signed and transferred here made you happy he's on the same bench as you now? Uh, it's, 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 it's been great, you know, having him around. He's a, a very high IQ guy, a uh, guy that can shoot the piss out of the ball. You know, me, LJ, <laughs> definitely have competition with him because he's a knockdown shooter. But definitely having somebody that's been a part of the, you know, Big 12 Conference and been playing against, you know, the best of the best and coming to our team is so special. And we're, we're definitely happy to have him. As for you going through the NBA draft process, uh, and what made you decide you wanted to come back? And what was that like for you? Uh, the feedback was, you know, very positive, uh, knowing that uh, they want to see the ball in my hand more and just step into that leadership role, as we talked about before. So I felt like it was, you know, obvious answer to come back, an opportunity to, you know, get completely healthy and be able to, you know, re rejoin the team and, and go for another national championship because that, you know, the UNC games was <laughs> some of the games that we let slip away really, you know, put a bad taste in my mouth. So I'm just excited to be able to be back and to go along his journey again. So you go into the portal after last season and you decide on Baylor. What is it that led you to that decision after playing against the Bears for so long? Um, honestly, they were one of the hardest teams to guard. So as a talented offensive player, a good shooter like I am, it's kind of it's kind of hard not to see yourself in that role, especially when you're considering transferring. And they just happen to reach out. So. I feel like all the pieces kind of fell into place on that one. How easy of a decision was it when, when Scott Drew offered you the roster spot? Um, I say it probably took like 10 minutes of serious like contemplation and we just kind of weighed my options because it was kind of between here and Alabama and it was just like overwhelmingly here was the better decision for me. What, what, what is it that stands out so far through summer workouts and going to Canada and so far through the fall? Um, just all the attention to like small details, I would say like they really care about improving across the board, whether it's your footwork, your follow through, whatever it may be. They just break down every little thing to help you be the best you can. What was the draw here? What did you like about Baylor that made you choose Baylor? Um, I would say the way they play. I obviously am close with three guys on the team from before I was even here. So that was another reason why it was such an easy decision. And it kind of reminds me of home a little bit because there's 
I, there's a lot more to do because Waco is way bigger than where I'm from, obviously. But there's really not much to do other than basketball. So that's that was important for me, and I'm happy to finally be back locked in. That was a different trip, Canada. How was that in terms of maybe helping you blend in with, with this team? Um, it was good. We got to fill each other out a little bit, and we got to see what everybody can do. It was really our first time playing together, and we still didn't even have three of the best guards in the country. And it was it's, it's exciting because it just shows that we were going to compete no matter who was out there. And we're, we were also trying to learn and play at the same time, so it was a little difficult. But I think I'm, I'm excited for the regular season coming up. You got like whether it be a superstition or a ritual that you had to do before every game or practice? Uh, I really don't have no superstitions. Um, I just go out there and play for um, you know, I'm in a locker room, I listen to music. I'm um, always listening to music um, before I go out, probably eat like some gummies or something, and then just go out there and just you know, play basketball, play for my teammates, uh, play for the city of Waco, and play for myself. How beneficial was that uh, those games in Canada for you and really for everybody? Um, for me, Canada was very beneficial as far as getting uh, accumulated with the system that these guys do and um, just kind of building a relationship, you know, off the court with those guys. You know, we was in the hotel, we was there for, you know, a couple of weeks and just kind of, you know, learning about them, you know, where they come from and just learning things about them that I didn't really know. Um, you know, as far as everybody, you know, I feel like, like I said, we gelled together. Um, even though we didn't uh, do what we wanted to do, you know, we still learn from it. And um, like, like we always say, we got better, you know, each and every day. And I feel like out there, you know, every day we won the day. Rather we was playing basketball, just doing something together. So I just really feel like it bring us all together as a team. If I may look at you as a basketball player first, but, but at Baylor, you know, fitting in school, academically, all that, how's that going for you? Uh, it's going well. Um, college is real different in high school. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just seeing some people that don't play sports, um, you know, they know, you know about the basketball program. So, you know, they know about me and just, you know, speaking to people, um, just kind of just showing them that I'm a nice guy. You know, I'm not just closed off. You know, I'm willing to you know, be able to talk to people and I'm a yeah. people person. So I just really feel like, you know, being able to have that opportunity, um, walking around the canvas, you know, I just feel like, I re really just feel like it's a blessing to be here and be around, you know, a lot of great people. Maybe it's something you've dealt with most of your life, but how do you handle the hype <laughs> around you? Uh, you come in like everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. Um. So for me, you know, just having a great circle around me, you know, having a lot of people, um, you know, that keep it real with me. So, you know, you know, on the Internet, you know, it says, you know, he's a high caliber guy, you know, he can do this, do that. But, you know, for me, I want people to tell me what I can do or what I need to work on. And I just feel like um, with the staff, um, Coach Drew, all and his whole staff, I really feel like they've kept me accountable uh, for things on and off the court as far as, you know, make sure getting the things on time, um, you know, getting here on time, getting extra work in, um, and just watching a lot of film. So that I, I kind of feel like that keeps me um, level-headed and kind of feel like I can get better at multiple things. So they really did a good job of keeping me accountable. You had offers from everybody that plays major conference basketball. What was it that sold you on Baylor and brought you here? Um, Just the culture. I know a lot of people talk about the culture here, but, you know, it's real. Our culture with joy. Um, culture really implements that, you know, in everything that we do. And I just feel like, you know, when I took my visits here, I really felt like I was on the team already. Um, it felt like a family aspect here when once I uh, touched down in Waco. Uh, just how much love the city of Waco gave, gave to me when I was down here. Um, you know, just every day they was, you know, keeping in touch. Um, you know, they did, they did a lot of little things um, that really, you know, sold me and I just really fell in love, you know, with everything that they had going here. So many high quality guards, especially on this team. I mean, all the way around, but, but just the guards. <laughs> What's yeah. that like to be part of? A group like that? Uh, man, I I ain't never been a part, um, you know, of a group like this. Uh, just having so many people that can do different things, like LJ can shoot it, uh, you know, Adam can shoot it, I can shoot it. So it's just like, it's just a lot of weapons around me. Yeah. And it makes the game a lot of fun. Uh, you know, all the guards, you know, we're real close. Um, you know, we know what each other can do and we just play off each other. So um, it's been really fun so far. Good. LJ, obviously a long road to recovery. You didn't know 
if you'd be able to play at any point in the NCAA tournament, but you get cleared for contact and to come back full go. I mean, how how exciting is that given everything you've been through? Um, it's very exciting, especially having to sit out so long and have to watch everybody hoop. Um, missed the whole summer. Had to watch my teammates in Canada. Um, so it's it's been it's been hard, but um, I'm just happy to be back. What was that recovery process like? Um, it's frustrating, of course, because um, you always have doubt in your mind, like you'll never be able to get back to um, where you were. But um, every single day I felt like I was improving um, little by little. So, I mean, it was hard, but I'm grateful for it. How difficult was that last year? Just, you know, it's kind of a game to game, day to day type deal. Did you, was how frustrating or whatever was that? Uh, it was frustrating because, I mean, I would come in at night and try to move around, just test it out and see, like, um, if I'd be able to give it a go. And, I mean, I knew it was, like, hurting a lot. So um, it was just frustrating um, because I couldn't go out there and compete with my teammates, and I knew I'd be able to give them a better chance to win. But um, it was unfortunate, but I'm here. You've obviously had great guards around you since you've been at Baylor, but this is a pretty special group, isn't it, with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Keontae coming in and, the other guy, Langston, right. healthy now? Um, I feel like we can be a national championship caliber group um, like before, so hopefully we continue to jail. Uh, everything runs smoothly, no injuries, and um, I think we should be able to get there. I know he was a true freshman last year, but did you and Langston maybe lean on each other recovering from injuries during <laughs> last season? Uh, for sure. Um, I mean, our relationship runs deeper than that because um, in high school we played um, AAU together. so. Um, Knowing him before this and having to go through this together has helped um, strengthen our relationship even more. Thank you, LJ. Thank you, LJ. I mean, you're definitely in that, that leadership role. Do you, I think you do really well at it. Do you, uh, are you more vocal? Do you try to be, or do you just be yourself? Um, in the past years, I didn't really have to be as vocal because we have a lot of vocal guys on the team. But as far as this year is concerned, I kind of have to be more vocal, and be a little extra, and, and, you know, being deliberate as far as telling the guys what to do because it's a new guy. You know, it's kind of like having to mold new players into something, understanding the Baylor culture of doing things. But besides that, I mean, it's fun. The guys embrace it. They're looking forward to it. So it's going to be fun. Good. What's different about, um, you kind of touched on it there, but what's different about your role for the coming season with you kind of being the guy now? Uh, I mean, the only difference is just me being more precise and uh, as far as giving instructions, because, I mean, if we look at the 4-5 the position, you know, it's basically everybody's new, you know, in that position. So me just being a vet, just having the experience to know the different position, knowing what the guys have to do and what expectation is what the guys have to do. Just, just got to make sure I'm just more deliberate in delivering information. Like, hey, you got to do this, this, this. And when it's not done, I got to make sure I correct it. What was it like seeing LJ get cleared to come back for, for full contact and full basketball? Oh, it was fun. So, you know, he's going to get more open threes. The more, the more he shoots, the more I'm open. So it's, it was fun. <laughs> it was definitely most fun. But it's, it's, it's good to see everybody healthy, you know, everybody coming here and having a big little practice. It's definitely fun. Was there much of a decision for you in terms of coming back? Or, you know, was that something you wrestled with? Or did you feel good about giving it one more go? Like uh, I wrestled with it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that kind of stuck with me was just the ability to come back and get a degree, a second degree. And that was big for me and speaking with my family and stuff. So that was huge. And besides that, I mean, you also have an opportunity to just come back at a great program and have an opportunity to win another Big 12 and a national championship. So, yeah. What's it like having uh, Keontae and Jalen on the same side, same side of the table as you? Uh, it's, it's definitely, it definitely feels good. Uh, I mean, Keontae is a top prospect, you know, has the ability to, he plays really well. Uh, I mean, with Jalen, it's funny we make jokes about it, but he always told me every time he was at West Virginia, he would try to rebound and be like, it would be a nightmare to go against me. But at least this year, I told him, at least you have me this time. We will be on the same team, so you ain't got to worry about that. But it's going to be fun, for sure. Well, fun. Is, there, is there one player who, who's maybe surprised you so far? Uh, through summer workouts, through the, the Canada trip, or anything you guys have been able to do so far? I mean, if there's one player, it would definitely be Langston. Just how his ability to recover, you know, after going down last year, you know, missing the whole season, but just seeing his improvement and him working hard on and off the court, you know, just as far as mental mental health aspect of it and also even physically, but like just how he made great strides to just come back and be, be able to ready to play, it's, it's, for me, that was pretty impressive. What do you think fans are getting, should expect from Langston for the coming year? 
Uh, I mean, just to be himself. Just go out there. He's very talented. Uh, sometimes may get over, but I mean, we we here. We're a team. We'll keep him. We'll keep him in good, in good, in good grounds and good company. But he's he's definitely really talented. That's for sure. I appreciate you go into the portal after last season. Yep. Decide on Baylor. I mean, what what led to that decision? Um, I think just a lot of things and a build up of things and. I'm so blessed to be have ended up here at Baylor and I've been treated nothing I mean close to extraordinary and I'm just so blessed to be part of a program like this that Scott Drew and his staff have built and excited to get this thing rolling. When you guys go into the season you mentioned the program that they've built and two years removed from a national championship a one seed last year I mean, what's the, the expectation like inside the locker room that whether it was established with you when you got here or when you mm -hmm. were talking about transferring here? I just think the accountability from all the coaches and the players kind of as a collective just to push each other to be the best we can be. And I think that just comes every day from competing and practice and pushing each other. And I think it's going to be a fun year. What have you seen from, from other guys that maybe stood out to you that you didn't see at BYU um, or in the West Coast Conference? Um, I just think of a full unit of leadership and every single guy really wanting and expecting greatness out of not only themselves, but their teammates. So I think just the overall leadership, the mentality, the culture of everyone that like, really wants to win and bring more championships to Baylor is something new to me. You, you had a good showing in, in Canada, as did you know Keontae and Flo and several other guys on, on this roster. Mm -hmm. How key was that for, for you to get acclimated to a new program and on the other side for these players to get acclimated to you? I think it was really, and like I told some of the other reporters, just us being able to go there together as a team so early on in the season, we had all only been together for three weeks to a month before we went out to Canada. So. All of a sudden, all of us being able to go out there and compete um, was really fun, and it was nice to you know start to learn some things kind of up front. Because um, I mean, going to a new program after being somewhere two years, you got to relearn everything. Got to learn their defensive schemes, the offensive schemes, just kind of everything that comes with that. So I think it was a little bit of a head start. What do you feel like you really bring to the table? What, what do you pride yourself on when you get up there on the court? I would say a combination of leadership and hustle and just being there, I think, every single play and pushing all these guys in practice to be the best they can be and holding myself and them accountable for everything and really just trying to win. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Everyone goes at each other in practice. Is there anybody specifically that's been giving you a lot of problems? Uh, I'll probably say playing with Flo because <laughs> uh, I'm not really used to playing with someone that kind of size, like bigger and stronger than me, but I feel like with time, I'll probably get used to it. Like, if you, I feel like it's the kind of person who actually like push me to actually because I don't, I don't think there's anyone in the Big 12 who actually like play soft. Everyone is actually gonna be strong and tough. So like, being able to go against Flo like every day and practice and stuff like it's gonna get me like ready for the season and stuff. So yeah. Is sure. there kind of like an internal competition on the glass between you, Flo, and Jalen? Um. <laughs> Um, kind of like there's some some days when like the ball goes up and if you're not quick to like look around who is close to you man you're not getting the rebound so like you have to actually hit someone in able to like get the rebound because if you just stand right there like the ball is flying like you said Jalen is right there Flo is right there and they're like you have to actually hit someone to be able to like get the rebound because if you just stand right there they might um, you might actually get hit first and if you get hit first it means the person who hits you first actually want to get the rebound not you yeah. What was it that uh, about Baylor that sold you on making the move and coming to Waco? Um, I'll probably say because I watch few of the games, and I probably say I like the way they play defensively, and also like the coaches too actually played a good role because uh, when you're getting recruit, um, when a college is actually recruiting you, like you don't get much chance to actually speak to the head coach. It's more like the assistant coach and stuff like that, but. And Coach Drew was always calling and checking and saying, how am I doing, not only basketball-wise, but like, how am I doing off the court? Like, how is my family, how is my school going? And even said, like, um, if, I haven't, if I want him to even talk to my mom, he's down to like, actually speak to my mom and stuff. So that was part of like, the reason why I actually chose this school, because they didn't just care about me basketball-wise. They asked about my family, and they care about how I'm doing off the court, too. So, yeah. Yeah, Scott Drew's 
very optimistic person. Uh, how important is that to the team to have that kind of energy come in just from the head coach alone? Uh, I feel like that's good because that helps the players to build more confidence in themselves, knowing like, oh, like even if I screw up during practice or even if I like screw up during the game and stuff, like the coach is not going to get mad at me. He's going to actually like push me, encourage me and stuff. So I feel like for we, the players, we feel like that is actually good because that's going to actually build our confidence in ourselves and in the coaches too. So yeah. Thank you. The season tips off in early November and the Bears have a loaded schedule. We'll have you covered all season long.